Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely glad to welcome you again. And today we are going to talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, in our previous videos we said that when a person really goes towards the spiritual world, when he has encountered an experience of God's love, he feels a great desire to share this love with all people and a great desire to help every person on the planet. And certainly, a person shares the truth and spreads those tools which would help each human as personality to overcome the demon that is within every person. In this regard, we received an intriguing question, with which I would like to begin our conversation today. It is as follows. How to communicate with a person in order to reach his personality? If at this moment you see that you are talking to his consciousness, after all, if you continue talking to his consciousness, be it primary or secondary one, you realize that they do not let you reach his personality. Then it turns out that you are wasting your time and attention. So is it worth continuing the conversation then, how to get through the impenetrability of consciousness in another person and reach his personality? That's a good question, which is asked quite often. It is conditioned by a person's desire, I would say for magic, that's unexpected, for power. But at the root of this question, there is the very need of a person to manipulate someone. Although the question comes from the heart, as they say, how to better help a person. Yes. But the desire to break through and to convey it directly to personality, bypassing consciousness, comes from consciousness of the person himself. Yes, because a demon is such an unreliable mediator for conveying information. It most probably transmits information to personality somewhat in a distorted way and so on. Or it doesn't transmit at all, and it stands guard. And one wants to bypass it, yes, exactly. Of course, directly to a person from soul to soul, as they say, and so that he would really understand. But I have a question then. Those guys who begin to transmit information, they strive and want, yet they are not heard. So what do they want? Power. Power in order to be heard. In the beginning they sincerely want to be heard, and then they want power, to manipulate others. After all, everything is very, very intertwined. At first this is done out of goodness, and then for one's own benefit. Everything is very simple. That's how the demon works. Well, the demon is, excuse me, in everyone. And, as a matter of fact, we all have one extremely powerful tool, and the most powerful tool, friends, is the Word. Through the Word, information has come to us, and with the Word we must pass it on. And naturally, we transmit it through intermediaries. But excuse me, we transmit information through our own intermediary, through that very demon, to the same demon in another person. However, we already discussed this, and we'll say it again that this very demon has no choice, it will report this information to Personality anyway. Yes, it may immediately comment, it may get outraged and evoke an emotion. Well, again, if the demon manipulates Personality, this information certainly doesn't reach Personality. So, when a person tries to tell another person about spiritual aspects, about the spiritual path, about how one can actually come to God by a short path, especially when the person, the one who informs others, begins to gain initial experience. Naturally, this is interesting, interesting to pass it on, because he gets a response. But when he encounters a situation where he doesn't get a response, he feels that his demon is weaker than that one. Thus, he cannot penetrate this armor, so to speak. And naturally, he wants more effective tools than the Word, meaning magic. Look how it all comes down to that. In any case, one should use a verbal tool and not deprive personality of the freedom of choice. And exclusively a verbal tool, of course. If a person possessed such power that he would convey information to people directly, he would eventually become a tyrant. Why? Because this is violence, whereas violence comes from Satan, while from God there comes only love, solely love. It's true, a demon doesn't perceive this love, and the consciousness of other people, as well as the consciousness 
of those very guys who have just stepped on the spiritual path is not capable of appreciating this love. And when a person receives the initial experience, he not only sends love himself, but he starts receiving it, then this is incomparable, this is really beautiful. But a day or two days pass, or three days for some people, and consciousness begins to actively suppress this person. Because of what? Because this is scary for the demon. And certainly, when people convey the true knowledge, then personality can respond when it is free. But if at that moment the person is busy with something and consciousness is active, what will happen? Activation. Of course, there will simply occur rejection of that information about the spiritual path, because for the demon it's a threat. So everything is very simple, friends. But in order to convey this information without force, it needs to be repeated many times and from different angles. Yes, there are people who need to be told 100 times, but maybe on the 101st time a person will actually wake up as Personality. Whereas if he is not given this information, well, again, the person will not have even basic understanding and knowledge, then he is definitely doomed. He's already under the power of Satan, and moreover, he lacks a tool that enables him to get from under this power and start living. Well, not sharing is not an option either. Igor Mikhailovich, there is another very common argument from consciousness, like, I will give the knowledge or share the truth with one person, but I will not share it with the other. Consciousness says, look, you are wasteful. You invest your attention in a conversation with a person, but he is not spiritual. He will now go and pour everything to the system. Thus, it turns out that you yourself has mismanaged that attention and that power which you have within you. How can we comment on this? Is it actually possible to feel whether another person is spiritual or not? We would like to consider this situation as well. Well, I'll put it this way. It is possible and necessary to feel. And it's a natural process, especially when people are on the spiritual path. And even the first experiences of contact with the spiritual world, which give additional power, often contribute to the fact that the demon inside a person starts weakening. So in order not to lose its power over this individual as Personality, it starts giving him as Personality such psychic abilities, to put it, delicately. And this person begins to feel other people. It's a natural process. Let's say it's a side effect on the spiritual path. And not only people, it often happens that people begin to foresee things as well. And there are many other demonic manifestations. But we will discuss this later or next time. Now the question of our interest is about feeling other people. That's normal, that's natural. But when we focus precisely on that, on what we feel, we have to understand that these feelings are not sincere and not profound, and they are not at the level of true feelings. They border on physical sensations that we have inside. In other words, it's a tool that is actually given to us by Satan, not by God. This doesn't mean that we have won, that we have already become so spiritually free and holy that we perceive everything we feel. We already see where there is a demon, where there is a righteous person, and so on. Let me give you a simple example. A person embarks on the spiritual path. He aspires, he works, he works hard on himself. But even such a person will run back and forth twenty or even a hundred times a day, you know, like a hare across the field first to the spiritual path, then, excuse me, to the devil's pit. Why? Because… I'll give you a simple example. A person has to solve something, it doesn't matter what, some task, some issues in the family or at work, whatever. Even if he is on the spiritual path and is concerned about how to penetrate the armour of another person's consciousness, and convey information about the spiritual path to Personality. Who strains oneself? Consciousness, of course, sure. Of course, it is Satan who strains himself. And a person puts a lot of effort into him, so that consciousness solves his domestic issue, a work issue, or something on the spiritual path. At this time, another person is judging him. What does he see? 
Actually, activation of consciousness, of course. Consciousness. So what happens to the person? The person is no longer on a spiritual wave, but he is already, excuse me, on such a wave. If we speak the language of vibrations as it is trendy nowadays, remember, we discussed those issues of vibrations. There's already another frequency of vibrations, not the one that is in you at this moment, right? Because right now you are having some subtle vibrations while the other person is having coarse ones. Hence, he is on the wrong wave. Funny, but this is so. Yet, the question is, if you convey some information to a person which relates to his spiritual development or is aimed at the other person's spiritual salvation, do you have any right to judge whom to give this information to and whom not? Let's look at this from a different perspective. I will quote a cliché. It has been repeated many times and by many people. Who needs a doctor, the sick or the healthy? Of course, the sick does. Yes, of course. And herein lies the answer. I mean, if a person is within the system itself, if he is manipulated by shaitan, he first of all requires this knowledge. Yes, as long as shaitan's power over a human as personality is great, it is extremely difficult to get through it. I'll say it again, you can give information 100 times, and 100 times the devil will reject it. But on the 101st time, a humanist personality can hear and perceive it. This way you can save a person, my friend. Whereas if you do not convey this information to him, he won't know about it at all. I'll put it even more simply, even the information which is literally transmitted through consciousness to consciousness remains in consciousness. And at a certain moment, the personality of another person who has this information in his consciousness, which you conveyed to him, even with distortions, but you were obliged to convey it, it is there anyway. And sometimes life circumstances line up in such a way that this very knowledge saves people. Far and wide, a person is simply not ready to perceive such information. Why? There are too many earthly affairs. A person is too busy with ordinary, mundane affairs. He doesn't care about spiritual development, he postpones it for later. Or, next year I'll go to church and pray to have everything forgiven. He has such a hope. A person doesn't understand that it is necessary to work every day, and much more in the spiritual aspect than in anything else. And again, who is hindered by spiritual development by this very contact with the spiritual work, from doing other work, it doesn't matter whether it is intellectual or physical work, it is really not an obstacle. On the contrary, it becomes even easier for a person when he occupies his demon with something, while the person is actually in contact with the spiritual world. Well, I understand that before that a person needs to take his lumps, to lose to his own consciousness more than once in the struggle for freedom from it. I mean a human as personality, so that afterwards everything would be good, easy and actually wonderful. At the initial stages, this is hard. It's hard for any person, and this is normal. There is nothing wrong with a person going back and forth 100 times a day from the spiritual to the material or getting lost in broad daylight, or when he already thinks that he firmly has two feet on the spiritual path and then he falls down, right into the pit. This is normal, it is life, it's a fight. And to fall when being in a fight is not a sin, it's a sin to not get up, right? Right. In particular, the Bible also says that anyone who thinks that he stands, take heed lest he fall. So it's really such a path when… And I will say, if you have fallen, do everything to get up. Yes. And this is normal. Thus we learn what consciousness is, what the devil is, and all his tricks. We understand his meanness and cunning, and we understand that our consciousness is not ours, and that it manipulates us, not vice versa. While in fact, consciousness was created primarily to serve a human as personality here, in three-dimensionality, because it is precisely consciousness that perceives all information from this illusory world and creates all these pictures, all smells, and all the audio information in order to analyze it and transmit it to personality about what is going on around him and with him, even about his health, 
I mean the health of his body. So anyway, all this information flows to a humanist personality, and without consciousness you can neither see this world nor communicate with anyone. Satan is needed too, but he is also a guard, and a very serious guard, the one who stands between a human as personality and the true home of a human, the spiritual world, the place where everyone aspires to. I emphasize, everyone as personality aspires to go there. However, a lot of variations, let's say, roots, appear precisely due to the work of consciousness, and our consciousness is tempted by something, or tries to seduce us as personality with any religions, trends, holy places or some activities, whatever, it distracts us with anything just to make sure that a humanist personality is not oriented towards God's love. Why? Because there is only one path to God, through love. Well, everything that Satan gives is ritualism. It is, I don't know, some practices of accumulating some powers inside, or feeling another person. Or feeling another person, right? Yes, going beyond the energy structure. Of course, and here again, I feel that this person is non spiritual, right? We have already discussed why he can be non spiritual. Well, he's actually a very spiritual, wonderful person. There is just activity of consciousness in him, which is now busy, even with serving that personality. But he will be perceived at the energy level, so to say, as non spiritual. There's a different perception, and there is already a judgment, right? And the person already deprives another one of the necessary and essential information. The person is already observing somebody else and not himself. Right. And there's another interesting point, which often happens as well, friends, when we perceive another person, and for us he is, you know, like a luminary, I would say, like a firefly in the darkness, like Buddha sitting in the lotus, in the most literal sense of this word. In other words, we perceive him as an absolute saint, and he resonates with us so much. Well, in fact, that person's demon simply, let's say, resonates with yours. Everything is very simple. Evaluating another person is possible and necessary for business, for life, and for many other things. But on the spiritual path, you should, first of all, take care of your own spiritual growth and help everyone, no matter what your shaitan tells you about another person, whether he is spiritual or non-spiritual, or spiritually perfect. Even if he is spiritually perfect, anyway, your love and your help won't hurt him, as well as any other person. After all, we live in one society, Therefore, when we take care of each other, then, first of all, this is good. When we don't do bad to each other, there is less evil in the world. These are simple things. When we control our demon, we become kinder and better. That's what we should do in the first place, right? Instead of striving for magic. As for judging how spiritual someone is, I think, it will be done by the Lord Himself when that person's time comes, and He will judge who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. As for us, we should strive so that the gate of heaven opens in front of us during this life. That's when life is guaranteed, right? Right. If we enter heaven in our lifetime, not a single shaitan will take us out of there. Because if a person encounters the spiritual world, it is unlikely that he will want to serve shaitan. This is a natural process. So, a person should strive and evolve. In reality, this perception through feelings is given to a person, and it is necessary, first of all, so that the person himself can understand with whom he is at the moment, with God or with the devil, but not in order to look for mistakes in another person, to evaluate another person, how spiritual he is or to what extent he is possessed by Satan. 
That's the point of perception through feelings, first and foremost. If it is used the right way, it's just that a person does not understand that here we are like switchmen. Our task is to pass on what we receive to others. We won't keep it for ourselves. It's like a train that is running, and you can direct it along one track or another, that is literally, change the switches. If you send it to a dead end, it's all meaningless. In this case, as they say, you send all this wealth, all this human happiness to nowhere. And you just feed the system, it's the same, you know, as if you baked a lot of good pies, and you cannot eat them yourself, as there are lots of them, so you pass them on and give them to other people. But pies keep on being baked. Naturally, you will distribute them. Your task is to give them to people, while people decide for themselves whether they eat those pies themselves, which were made with love and given to them, or they feed them to pigs, or give them to birds, it doesn't matter, it's kind of noble as well. Yet one hasn't benefited from them and hasn't eaten them himself, although maybe those pies would have given a person life and salvation. That's already the choice of those people who receive, whereas our task is to give away what we receive, for we do not get it from ourselves. Therefore, we must pass it on. Well, consciousness often catches us at a certain moment on a thought that this is ours, that we have formed this, yes, right. that we are already so strong, and gradually, having fallen for this egoism, there is no other way to call it. This is literally banal egoism which Satan awakens in us, and he begins to manipulate us. Look how strong you are already, how spiritual you are, yes. how cool you are, yes. This is all due to your efforts, yes. Your efforts, right. And here due to you, your wisdom. Sure, solely yours. And you pass on this greatest knowledge that comes from you. And people are just grateful to you for that, exactly to you. But what do you have to do with that? If a person begins to act and think this way, it means he has already lost. It means he is being manipulated by Satan. Why? Because at the next stage a person will already desire power over others and will start building for himself a temple made without hands, as they say, meaning an illusion of power in this three-dimensional world. And every time he will move further and further away from God, that is, with each thought of this kind, because the next thought will come to him as soon as he allows a thought that he is great, that this belongs to him and is coming from him. There will appear a thought like, why perform practices? And practices will weaken. And then why perform them at all? Right? Because… Coldness in prayers, yes, as it was described in the past. Of course, after all, as it was described in the past, well, it's the same path. Yes, exactly. The path of error, the path that leads down from the top, not upwards, to heaven, but back to earth, and then under it. And it's all the fault of our pridefulness and our foolishness, that is, something the demon gives us. What is a temple made without hands? Usually, this is said about the spiritual growth of a person himself, the one who, let's say, spiritually evolves and creates inside himself a place for the Lord God. And this is right, but inside each of us there is a soul, and the soul is part of the spiritual world. This is our true temple to which we must pray. The only place we can come in contact with, I mean, spiritually, that is, it is where we, by sending love, can receive it back a hundred times more than we ourselves have given. That's the point. However, we often create a temple made without hands for ourselves in this world, which is of a completely different kind. This temple is our egoism. It is our image that we form in order to successfully sell it to others. And that image may look quite spiritual to people, or on the contrary, absolutely material. I would even say so tough in a business-like way. It may be like that, but in fact, there may be precisely fear and all the rest behind that. In other words, all our images which we artificially create are also temples made without hands, 
but they are not real. They exist as long as we feed them, like any image, like any phantom. However, in each of us there is that temple which is impossible for a human to create. That temple is what we call the soul. This is that gate through which we can actually enter heaven, eternal life. If, let's say, Satan allows us to, and Satan will allow this only when we succeed in stepping over him, because without stepping over or passing through him, we won't be able to reach the gate of heaven. And that's normal, that's fair. We must fight for life, though fight not against each other, but fight first of all within ourselves for the freedom of ourselves as personalities, first and foremost, from our own consciousness. That's when everything gets better. But it is much easier for us to fight in the outside world against anyone, against each other, for anything, to the dictation of that very Satan. See how simple everything is? And to evaluate other people, to divide them into spiritual or unspiritual, instead of uniting everyone in God's love. This is exactly what we should do. Unite people in God's love. Therefore, you should be guided solely by your own inner spiritual perception of the spiritual world and develop that inner love. And no matter how much is given to you, you should give it to people. Then you yourself will receive more. Look at how simple this is. The formula is very simple. I also remember the words in Islam, in the Qur'an, that we have not sent you as the Akipa. Your duty is only to deliver the message. Absolutely right. This is very important. And it seems to me this actually confirms what you've just said, that if one has encountered the truth, it's important to convey it and not to worry about who will get those pies. You know, there is a simple understanding. If you have received the truth and haven't passed it on to another person, you have killed it. That's the meaning of this truth. The truth is alive as long as it is conveyed from soul to soul. Then it is nourished with power. Then one united egregore is created. And then, let's say, our prayers are heard. But as soon as we elevate ourselves above the Truth, the Truth is no longer given to us. Yet there are plenty of illusions that elevate us to heavens, and we already forget even about God. Such is the world. That is why you have to be on guard. That is why you have to keep a close eye on your demon and on what he's telling you in your head. And you shouldn't give in to such insidious thoughts from him that this person is spiritual while that one is not spiritual. If I give it to him, he will pass it all to Satan. Precisely at this time, when you are thinking this way, my friend, you yourself, with your own hands, are feeding Satan with your own life. You know, it's like feeding animals in the zoo. Is it worth it? Of course it's not, because it is all an illusion of life, while you should live for real. And real life begins only with love. So, friends, let's just sincerely and truly love each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you.